Good morning, I'm Cody Henriksen, and today we're gonna to be taking a look at how we can create all of our standard projects we'll be making throughout the year using Eclipse and Java. So I've got Eclipse open and ready. As you can see, I'm already inside my workspace. Nothing's open or ready to go, but we're gonna talk about the basic process we do to make every single project we'll make for the entire year. And as this is a great reminder of how you can build a project and start and go from there as we go along. So the first thing we're gonna do is we wanna go over here inside the Package Explorer, and we can either right click and choose new, go up to File and choose new, or click on this button up here in the top left corner, and also choose new, and that's where we're gonna create a new Java project. I'm just gonna go right here and choose Java project from that. We always wanna give our project a name that makes sense to describe what we're doing, and it's, it needs to be a name without spaces because again, when we're talking with computers, remember that spaces don't make sense to them. They get confused. They think each new uh, word is a whole new thing entirely. And so we don't wanna confuse our uh, program when we do that. So I'm gonna just call this demo project. Again, using the default location, that workspace we've already defined, you can see that again in some of our other videos, we can use that. For the execution environment, um, whatever execution environment you're working with, it, it's great as long as it's Java 5 plus. As you can see right here, mine is currently 1.8. If you choose one of the other ones, like say 10, 11, or 12 or above, if you're using those higher levels of the JDK, the one thing you have to make sure is never create a module-info.java. They're bad, they're nasty, we'll talk about that more another time. On project layout, we always want to have separate folders for source and class files. That's the default structure we'll be working with. And all we have to do after this point is go ahead and click finish. As you can see, I now have a project listed in my package explorer. It's ready to go. We click on the triangle. You should always see your JRE system library right here. If for some reason that's not properly listed or you have a red exclamation point, you have a problem with your JDK setup on your machine and you'll need to go in and change the configurations for that. And again, take a look at how you can do that using help files or Stack Overflow. A lot of great websites to go on how to do that, but you should have that automatically. What you want to see right here is the source folder. This source folder is where all of your code that we're writing in class is going to go. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to create two packages to start off for every single project. We have our controller package and our view package. Now so usually we'll also have a model package as well because we use a model view controller relationship for all the code we're making in this class. But to start off by default, we always know we're going to have a controller and a view, no matter what we do once we get past our quick little demo projects. So let's go ahead and make those right now. So we go to new and we go to package. And a package, again, in Java is just a way of holding stuff. It's a fancy name for folder. When we're creating a naming convention for package, the naming convention standards use lowercase letters separated by dots. And I always like to say exactly what we're working with. So I'll have demo.controller and demo.view for the default ones. So we'll start with that right now. So demo.controller and hit finish. And you can see a cute little empty white package right here. We'll do another one for demo.view as well. And right now, these are empty folders. There's nothing in them at all. And so if we create our repository and ha have that put into GitHub right now, nothing's gonna be in there. It's not gonna be very useful. So we wanna do a couple things first. We're gonna go ahead and add a file to our controller package. The first file we're always gonna make is the runner. And the runner's gonna be the same basic thing every single time. So we'll go ahead and go over here and make a new, and we're gonna make a new class. And we're gonna just call this the runner. It's the easiest name we have to use. And we hit finish. Now, as you can see right here, we have the package name. The package name is always gonna be the first line of code of every Java file. Now, if you're looking at your textbooks and stuff, you'll often see in many of the textbooks do not have a package because they put everything on one single giant folder and everything just sits right there. I like to differentiate the roles of the code we're working with and so I always have my um, packages separate out so the roles of the different files belong to what folder they're in. So we can try and organize our code a little bit more effectively for that. And so we have our public, um, public class runner sits inside the demo controller package and right there. Now our runner is going to be the same all year long. There's never going to be any changes to what happens inside the runner. It's going to have one method and one method alone. That method will have only two lines and that's it. It'll look the same on every single file we make the entire year. And so we have public, clap, and the method is public, static, void main, and string, square brackets, args. Now right here at this point, we have the most amazing app. This is stupid app number one. If we create a project and run right now, it'll do absolutely nothing. That's it. But it runs and compiles just fine. You can't have a project run unless you have a main method. And the main method has this exact format right here. So this is the basic structure we have. We're gonna add another file in just a minute. But right here, once we've got this, we can actually start our project. Our runners are gonna look the exact same way the entire year long. So as we go through all of our projects from here starting in August, all the way through till the end of the year, our runners are gonna look the exact same. So this is something you'll be practiced making on a regular basis. You shouldn't have to worry about even thinking about doing this. You can simply just put this together and it's ready to go. The first thing we'll have is the name of the controller we're making for this project. 
followed by a call that controller's start method. So we're going to make a controller class as well. And we'll do this before we even write the, uh, make that right here. So I'm going to go back to my controller and make a new another class. And we'll call this demo controller. And again, it's going to be inside the same package. You can see it's nested in here in a hierarchical sense. And so demo controller and runner are both inside the demo.controller package. And again, that's the first line of code for that. Inside my public class demo controller, we have our class created right there. And we're going to add one method for it right here. We're going to add a public void start and open and close squiggles. So as you can see right here, my I have a, a class with a start method. The start method has no code in it at all, but this is enough to get my program ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. We've got that right there. And we're gonna create a runner so it works exactly the way it is for the entire year. So I'm gonna say that demo controller app equals new demo controller followed by a semicolon and then app.start. This right here is what our runners will always look like for the entire year. No change, no difference, just these five lines of text the entire year through. So this is something we'll be working with on a regular basis. We have our main method, which will always look just like this. We have, a instantiation, <clears throat> we have an instantiation of our demo controller object, whatever controller we're working with for this current project. And so we say the name of the class, the variable we're making for it, the equal sign, which is the assignment operator, followed by the keyword new, and then the name of the class again is how we call its constructor. We're gonna make the instance of that object. And again, we'll go over all this as we go through the year. This is the same basic approach work for the entire year for every single project. So you should be very comfortable doing this. After we initialize the object, we tell that object to call its start method, and that's it. This starts the flow of control to go from the runner, then moves into the controller, which can then start the program and do anything it's gonna do from that point on. Once we've got that doing, we can go ahead and hit right here. We can hit the play button. It's going to say, oh, I need to save my resources. Great, wonderful. And we will have this happen. This is going to run. If we look at our console window right here, we can see that the application itself has terminated. It ran and did nothing successfully. This is the best app ever. We have done nothing and it worked. That's exactly what we want to see happen. Now, like I said, this runner class is never going to change. This will be the same structure of code we write all year long, no matter what project you're working on inside your Java projects. So we can go ahead and close this. We don't even have to come back to it. The controllers, we're going to be doing a lot more of the work. The controller class is what's going to send the information back and forth using the model view controller relationship. We'll talk about that as we go along, but this is where we're going to see lots of code happen. And the start method is where we're going to start and join into things right here. We'll talk about how the code works and where the flow of control happens and as we go through in more detail. But this is just a quick little basic of how you can create an immediate project. It starts, it runs, and does nothing effectively. This is often called my stupid project number one, but you can have a project work and go at this point. Once we've got this done, the next step we'd want to do is we want to make sure we commit this project to GitHub, add it to the repository, put it up onto the um, thing, and we have a backup right there we can commit and add as we go along with that. That's the same, that's the structure we'll talk about in another video, so you can see how to do that. But this is the basic project of how you can make a simple do-nothing project, start it off, and then add to and create it, make it go better. Thanks again, and we'll have a great day. We'll talk to you more in the future. Bye.